ultrasound right now. So basically what are the things can be seen. So as an anesthesiologist we are interested in knowing in the optic nerve seat diameter. We put the probe as gently as possible over the eyes and try to look for the glow. Okay. So uh, what the structures you are seeing is very clearly. You can see the anterior chamber and lens. So anterior chamber and the lens, the posterior border of the lens, you can see that. And while coming down, so this is the area where you see the optic nerve. Now the optic nerve seat diameter is, is related. So you can see started seeing the optic nerve. Okay, you will tell the patients to uh, move his eyeball towards a little bit in the left side please. Okay, left or right, then you once you get the idea that this is the optic nerve C. And uh, we'll, we'll study one by one in details in due course of time. But here you have started seeing the optic nerve. And uh, if I freeze the uh, image, if you see, a, a, if I can freeze the image, all right, somewhere here, this is the optic nerve, this dark area, and there is a seat beside it. So you have to freeze that area when those uh, things are uh, uh, things are things are clearly delineated. So you have to target the seat. All right. So uh, uh, you can. You, so basically, this aim of this uh, video is to see that what are the things you can see. Uh, Pachydema is readily visible. No need to put your probe in it and uh, retinal detachments to foreign body to blood in the vitreous cavity, everything you can see. So, but the aim of the, uh, the, uh, the teaching uh, over here is to find out optic nerve seat diameter. Uh, so that is the optic nerve in the corner you are seeing. Huh? Okay, so this is our target of examination. That is the optic nerve you are seeing just below the arch, uh, below the globe. So this is optic nerve seat diameter. So let us uh, uh, remove this and continue with the further examination of anesthesia. Can you, can you, can you get a tissue for the cleaning of this? So I'll just remove the uh, pillow. The next is to see the cricothyroid membrane. So cricothyroid membrane can easily be seen uh, by examination uh, at the center of those uh, uh, trachea. So anybody's trachea can be visible. Can you take the recording over there? This is the trachea, and these are all tracheal rings you are seeing. The gland, besides those trachea, uh, are the thyroid glands. The both lobes are visible, and here is one carotid, and other one is the other carotid. This is not the point over here. We are going to see the uh, tracheal rings and uh, the cricothyroid membrane. So this is very helpful in the case of uh, in case of uh, in case of difficult anatomy or, or CICV sort of situation. So what you are going to see is first, uh, uh, first, uh, uh, first double layer thing appeared, appears that is after the thyroid has to be cricoid cartilage. So you know this is the thyroid, this is the first hump and we brought this, uh, uh, brought this uh, probe little down and what we are seeing is first double layered thing here. If you can see it here very clearly, first is the thyroid there and the second is the double layered thing is the cricothyroid membrane. So what I am saying is this is cricothyroid membrane. Why I am saying that this is cricothyroid membrane? We know that this is thyroid. I came down. So first is the most valid is the first thyroid catalyst, second thyroid, this beads like appearance. So here you can see, so target of, uh, 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 target of finding cricothyroid membrane is this. Why to find by ultrasound? I'll let you know that how much time the, we get correct uh, 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 cricothyroid membrane uh, identification in obese patient. So as you see here, uh, 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 we can see the cricothyroid membrane is this. The, this is the thyroid cartilage, single layer, the first double layered stuff has to be cricoid catalyst. So this is our uh, cricothyroid membrane identification for cricothyroidotomy in CICV type of situation. So these are similar to A lines. So next up we are going 
is to show uh, those uh, interscreen uh, block. Where do you see the interscreen? Can you put the uh, pillow over under under the net? So this is how you find the same jelly. Just these are all demonstration purposes. So what we are seeing here is uh, is is the trachea. This is how I do it. And once uh, I find the carotid, I come laterally and and follow the sternocleidomastoid muscle. All right. So once I'll just tell gently to rotate it. The first, second, and third traffic light is those. These are those uh, uh, interscalene group. This is the anterior scalene muscle, and this is the scalenus medius. And in between, there are three traffic light sort of thing. This is interscalene group. So here you do the block. You can see the position of my hand here, and you just uh, uh, you just you just follow them. Either you follow them from supraclavicular. This is from here to top or from here to down. So uh, either way you can uh, do the supraclavicular or infra, uh, sorry, interscalene block. So very nicely seen in this small subject, two muscles and three traffic lights, all right? So in our presentation or in our uh, future video, we'll go in details what exactly the structures you are puncturing, what is this and what is those layers are visible. We'll talk about those in, in extensive details. Where is your needle coming from? How it is coming from? And what are the potential harm you can do to the patient? So, you know, this is, if I, if I, uh, if I, if I decrease the depth of the patient, it is a thin patient, this is the supraclavicular area. So both the block we are uh, talking here, and here is the interscreen, three traffic light in the middle of the screen you can see. So this is interscreen and this is supraclavicular. Can you see the, so the movement of my hand? How do you get those? Can you take the screen? Some people get uh, confused that you have to, uh, you have to, you have to, uh, you have to do a lot of difficulties. They are quite nearby. So one is, uh, one is interscreen and one is supraclavicular. This subtle movement of the probe can give you both. See, this is interscreen and this is supraclavicular. With a little movement of the probe, this is supraclavicular. You can show it here in my hand how I am doing. This is supraclavicular and by this time, this movement with a, with a few centimeter, I am coming to interscaline. So this is the one of those, you know, uh, very important block everybody should know. So needle comes from here and just, you know, two centimeter or 1.5 centimeter, you reach the target. So what are the potential danger, what are the potential structures gets penetrated or what are the structure actually gets penetrated, nobody talks about this, what this nerve can be, what are the, uh, where is the phrenic nerve and all these details we were going to discuss in the subsequent time. Now coming here around this period of uh, uh, this location, you are seeing the carotid, you are seeing the internal jugular vein. So, uh, uh, so all this uh, uh, venous cannulation are, 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 are so you should just release your pressure, you see the internal jugular vein for the CVP calculation. So, what are the other muscles are uh, visible in the ultrasound? Nobody talks about that. We will talk in detail in extensive way about those muscles in your future. Now, now, there is one more block called stellate ganglion block. I will just try to tell to remove this uh, 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 pillow again, just to uh, so look up now, look up. So we will try to see uh, the uh, location of the stellate ganglion uh, uh, and find out uh, the chesnia tubercle. The chesnia tubercle is the, uh, uh, you know, uh, the first, uh, uh, this is the trachea and it is the, the most convex tubercle uh, the anterior tubercle of those, uh, 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 what you, uh, the C6. So what is happening is, it, you see, so uh, uh, where, which level you get the, uh, you give the stellate ganglion block. Now, first of all, you palpate your cricoid membrane, mark it, and that is at the level of uh, C6. 
So this is the Chesnia tubercle. Now see what I am going to do. This is the, the most prominent tubercle. Sometimes you can feel in your hand also, right? So what you do is, this is the tuberculous, you know, this is the Chesnia tubercle. You, you go down a little bit, then, then the surface becomes flat. So this is C7, okay? This is C7 and this is C6. This is C6, this C7 and this is C6. C6 is more anteriorly placed. So what you do, uh, you can do in plane, out of plane, whatever you like. This is the longus coli muscles just besides the, just beside the, beside the carotid artery. You bring your needle somewhere here and you deposit uh, the local anesthetic above the longus coli muscles where the stellate ganglion or sympathetic chain uh, uh, lies. So somewhere here, it, 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 since it's a thin subject, every, every structure is visible very clearly. So you can just deposit your local anesthetic here. We'll talk about exactly what are the structures pierced and what the lo exact location. What I wanted to take out from this place is this. This is the Chesnia tubercle and here is C7. This is C6 and here is C7. C7 has a straight uh, appearance of vertebra uh, uh, and the C6 has a tubercle uh, 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 anteriorly placed. So, so we finished, what are the things? We finished the intercalene, again, the intercalene, supraclavicular and stellate ganglia. And what else we finished with straight line position? We finished, the, this is our thyroid catalyst. Can you keep your leg, uh, head straight? This is our thyroid catalyst. First drop in the thyroid catalyst, double line is cricothyroid membrane. The more obese the patient, the easier you get those locations. So uh, uh, get those uh, uh, get those cricothyroid membrane identification. This is the trachea, and these are the two thyroid lobe and the carotid enteral jugular. We finished uh, around three fourth stuff. So we talk about ocular ultrasound, uh, intercalene, supraclavicular, cricothyroid membrane identification. Then we will gradually go down to find out the infraclavicular uh, area or infraclavicular nerve block. It can be used for two purposes. So first is just to find out where is those artery, okay? That is, uh, you can say a subclavian or axillary artery, whatever name you can say. <coughs> you have to make the prominent. Uh, can you put the uh, pillow under his neck again? Okay. Now, uh, uh, Julius, can I can I tell you to keep your hand like this? Okay. Can you can you put the pillow a little bit uh, inside? All right. So, just for demonstration purposes, either you can do it this way. Uh, this is the vein you're coming, and that is the artery. So, or in this way. Whatever way which is convenient for you, you can do uh, the infraclavicular nerve block. So what you are seeing is the infraclavicular artery, or make say it be subclavian, or uh, say it be uh, 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 axillary. So all around the artery, you don't see the nerve roots properly, but just below it's the posterior cord. This side or the right side of the screen is the ulnar side and the, the, uh, the left side of the screen, the median side. So if you release the pressure, you can see the vein as well. Now, uh, since it is far away from lung, so you can, you can, uh, you can just, uh, 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 you can avoid those pneumothorax sort of thing. All right, so where is the vein then, subclavian vein? This is the subclavian artery. So if I just release the pressure, I can see the subclavian vein somewhere there. If I bring that vein, this is the artery, I release the pressure, I start seeing the vein. So once I start seeing the vein, this is the same approach can be used for the subclavian uh, CBP uh, cannulation. So this is the artery, once you bring the artery, just release the pressure and look for the vein. Once the vein is around your view, you can go for those uh, with the help of this for the subclavian CVP calculation. You can see the vein, now it is becoming more prominent.
so so i can go here or uh, wherever there is a best picture so i can bring the vein vein to the center of the screen it's in the collapse state now so you know uh, can you take a deep breath can you take a deep breath uh, julius okay so uh, somewhere there is the vein so you have to follow that vein for the calculation it looks difficult in some cases but it is not so in, uh, we will discuss the subclavian vein calculation and those uh, uh, infraclavicular knot block with this video later on now let's go to axillary so he is going to put his hand like this and we are going to see his axillary artery once axillary artery is visible our job is done so this is for the axillary block okay for the peripheral surgery so once the axillary artery is found out so you have you you, you start seeing those nerve root this is the vein okay this is the artery uh, so basically my needle will come from there okay all around this i'm not going to name it which is median which is radial which is ulnar but uh, we all uh, know that so that are, what i wanted to tell that to concentrate on two muscles in between so there is coracobrachialis and bicep brachii in between this there is a bright structures this is the musculocutaneous nerve so this is our axillary artery all right and this is the musculocutaneous nerve so unless it is blocked Uh, or you block it very close to the axilla so that it may get blocked so it's it's always blocked separately so this is uh, uh, you know one of those uh, nerve roots you can see it is very difficult to name uh, sometimes which is what depending upon the position but some people say that this is the conjoint tendon this is the muscular cutaneous nerve this is the axillary artery so basically you know once you know this anatomy very clearly and there are two muscles coracobrachialis conjoint tendon and coracobrachialis and bicep brachii and this is the conjoint tendon you can see it here they name it conjoint tendon it's a misnomer or whatever but you deposit your local anesthetic here you know there is a vein here you should violate this vein you should not violate this vein uh, while puncturing so you just press it and deposit your uh, local anesthetic wherever so probably one injection here and one injection here will suffice the axillary artery around block but this will need a separate injection which is called the axillary or uh, or the muscular sorry muscular cutaneous nerve so you can follow that up it's one of those brightest nerve in the body by ultrasound so because of uh, certain reasons but you know uh, this has to be blocked separately so this is for the axillary block so we discuss supraclavicular uh uh interscalary axillary and infraclavicular now now can you put your uh, hand this way and you look this way so what i wanted to show is this the corner corner pocket so everybody talks about that nobody i mean it's not a big uh, fancy thing but this is the first rib over which the artery is lying there and this is the supraclavicular brachial plexus all in one place though this is one of the block everybody should know uh to uh to have something like spinal of upper limb so you bring your needle through the uh, medius splenic muscle muscle or whatever so basically what we are going to talk in details one by one of this blocks of what are the important structures you are piercing nobody talks about that so uh and uh, how to take care of this this is first thing we know how to see lung and pleura can you take a deep breath lumbar sans uh, okay so you know the white structures whatever you are seeing over there if i increase the depth you can see that there are some lines over there this is called no fly zone needle should not violate this uh, otherwise there will be pneumothorax so uh, you know lung is seen how does the lung look and uh, uh, looks uh, uh, all those things we will discuss uh, in later part of the video All right we stop here then we go to cardiac and lung examinations all right